I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now starting. Welcome to the Hey everybody, welcome to Grape Therapy. I'm your host, Caitlin Bristow, and Jason was just asking if we're starting, so the answer is yes. Your session is now starting. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. To uh, an episode of Grape Therapy. Yep. To charity. To charity. And not to Brayden. And not to Brayden. <laughs> And to Joey and Aaron B. Cheer, yeah, Aaron I think B. Those two MVPs. Joey, well, no, no, no. Number one MVP, without a doubt, and we could get into this is Charity. The yes. other MVPs, Joey and Aaron B. The not so MVPs, Brayden. Brayden. <laughs> Brayden. Most valuable loser with dangly <laughs> earrings. Oh, that's so mean. That is mean. I don't, I don't like him though. And yeah, but you don't. It's not, you don't dislike him because of his earrings. You don't no, dislike him because of him. No, it's just an easy target. That's like a bully. I'd, I go for the easy target. I'm gonna defend you. I'm gonna say you just wanted to say the old dangly earrings because it's like one of your favorite lines from any from movie. Home Alone. Home Alone. And the, she's trying to sell him the earrings to get money to get home <laughs> to his son, and he goes, "She's got a whole drawer full of them, dangly ones." <laughs> And that's what I think. That was actually a really good impersonation. Dangly ones. <laughs> dangly ones. Dangly. Oh, and then he gives in. I can see he, the old guy do it. And then he gives in and he goes, oh, all right. <laughs> uh, that's a good, that was that was a 10 out of 10 impersonation. <laughs> it's better than your Australian accent, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's not good. I was trying to do Brooks from Vanderpump today and it was not good. It was not good. It was, it was, I was yeah. It, um, was, it was like English. Wait, and also, who is it that actually got the MVP? Adrian. Adrian got the MVP. Yeah. Okay. Adrian well, was, and he was like Mr. Um, Shitster. He just stirred all the shit up. No, he's Mr. Buzz Killington. He's just Buzz. too serious. You know, yeah, that's true. You know like Buzz the guys, Killington on Family Guy? Oh uh, no! I when didn't he know just that. Yeah. He, everyone's trying to have fun, and he comes in with a hard fact and like makes it not fun, and everyone yeah. goes, "That's Buzz Killington." That's what they called him. Yeah. Because he would the the kids were just like the guys, whatever. They're just like having a good time while they're on the date. I don't see what the problem is with that. <laughs> Now that I've got you, let's both revisit the birth of the Doily Cot Opera Company. Ah. <laughs> it's Buzz Killington. He oh, always is just that, like, oh, that's what he does. Yeah, because the Buzz Killington on The Bachelorette, he's just always coming in with, it's like spring break and everyone's having too much fun with each other. It's Who like, it's, it's week two, and the guys are broing out in the mansion having drinks and being in the hot tub. Who cares? Who's your, Spring break 2023. Let's go. Who would you say is another Buzz Killington from previous seasons? Luke P. Luke P is a huge Buzz Luke Buzz P. Killington. That was Hannah Browns. I never remember people from seasons. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Who's the last bachelor? Um, oh my god, I must have match him. Zach uh Shawcross. Okay. Actually, I really liked his girls. I don't know. There's a lot of Buzz Killingtons in the franchise. Okay. Like, I definitely remember the Buzz Killington from my season. Who's that? Ian. Just a buzz kill. He was like, mm, she doesn't like me enough. <laughs> She's just out here making fart jokes. And I was like, who doesn't love a fart joke? <laughs> That's you. Take it or leave it. Yeah. And he left it. He left it. And I'm happy about he that. He fired himself before he got fired. No, he quit before he got fired. Uh, yeah, that's the line. That's the line. Hi, Tino. You're um, not a buzz kill. No, Pino's not a buzzkill. He's an angel. He's What's an, the opposite of a buzzkill? A, a, a good time. <laughs> okay. A positive patty. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, okay, so The Bachelorette. I don't know how many of my listeners are watching The Bachelorette this season. Stop, really? Oh, I don't know. Huh. I feel like I did a poll on my Instagram, and it wasn't good, but here we are. I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. I haven't seen your season. I've seen at least one episode. Let's watch it. Let's not. <laughs> Actually, that'd be kind of funny. We could do a YouTube series on us watching your season. I seasons. already plan on doing that. I'll go full force, too. I'll, I'll get, like, bombed and just chirp away. Like, you'll see a different side of me. Mm, no? I don't really want... I think that would cause some problems. Oh. Yeah, okay. I don't think you want to watch. Okay, maybe I won't. You think it would cause problems if I watched? I, I think, don't think so. I don't think it would cause problems as in, like, you would... Be like, or you Ugh. think if I was chirping someone, it would now recreate problems? No, I think it, I would just be like, "Hey, that was actually really hard for me. Now you're making fun of me." Oh. And then it would be like, "I was thinking about more chirping the guys, but oh. yeah, let's just not watch. It. I haven't watched for a reason, and, and I think that's a good 
We don't need to watch it. I've seen little bits and pieces, but here's dangly what, ones. The dangly ones. Here's what I was gonna say. Since your season, I've seen at least one episode of every single Bachelorette, and I'm gonna go on the record, say. This was the first full episode I watched of Charity. The most I've enjoyed any Bachelorette. Me too. Since then. Me too. No offense I, to all the other Bachelorettes. No, everyone's great in their own way. But for me, it, it she is so pure. She is so, so real. Pure. There's not a fake bone in her body. Sharp is f- uh, st- like a huge, huge shout out to um, Carrie the Carrie, stylist. Stylist, styling and Gina perfectly. Makeup. But you know when just there's there's you can like sense a little like just like putting it on performative there's, there's nothing performative no she's it's so real and it's so easy to watch her. So, i sent her a text while we were watching and i was like you are so easy and fun to watch yeah and her just her whole like vibration and energy her energy's electric you know what okay the other thing i found interesting when we met her at cma fest mm-hmm. i found her, her I, all those things were the same Except, she, and, and maybe she was just burnt out or whatever, but she seems a little more, like, reserved, a little more shy. She bitch is tired. But, oh, yeah, that's it. Because on camera, she runs the show. She well, runs the screen. Like, you know the Q rating thing where you're just drawn to her? She has that star power oh, when you're 100%. watching her on camera. But you're don't, drawn to her. don't we all turn it on a little bit for TV? Like, she's probably, finally, I can turn it off and just watch just some like, music. Be, yeah, and be yeah. chill. Yeah, Which I respect. True. Yeah, but I think I, the most excited I've been about a Bachelorette in the last, whatever, eight years of seeing seasons. Yeah, she's got it. And I think she's going to go. I think if she wants to go big into this TV space, like being a, like no, a, I think an she anchor, wants to actually, reporting, whatever it might be, she can be a star in this space. I don't think she wants to, though. I'm not, I'm, I don't want to speak for charity. What I gather is that I don't think she would want that. She's got it. That it to go be like, Whatever that is, I think she could do if it. If she wants it, she if can she do wants it, of course. It, she, she yeah. got it. And I also like the depth of, what you say? She has a master's of science in, is it clinical uh, mental health She studies? has her master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. Yeah, you can tell. Like yeah. her her depth in these conversations and is you can unlike also, anything I've seen. You can also tell when, <laughs> who was uh, Aaron on the very first date, which really shocked both of us at mm-hmm. how well that went. She got all the way turned on when he was like, yes, so I got into therapy. She was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> and I love that. That was it was so cute because you could tell. Wait, you threw a little chirp towards him when he said, I. Hmm? He didn't say I went to therapy. He said, I like. What was the word? No, I like used? walked into therapy. No, I no, I checked I entered, in. Checked I checked in. Therapy. And you were like, checked in? What do you mean? Checked in. That sounds like Pete Davidson. Yeah. Checked into rehab. Yeah, That's yeah, what it yeah. sounds like. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, their date was so also pure. It yeah. felt a very easy, very genuine. I thought he got ripped off with a Hollywood sign. Okay, the sim- symbolism of a hundred years and the longevity of love and relationships and his parents are still together and her parents and I'm always like, yeah, yeah, it must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like a Hollywood sign and champagne. Yeah, I don't know, it's kind of boring. but the closest the public can get to the Hollywood see- sign is like four football fields away. To, so to be up on it, I don't know. I think that was kind of cool. It was okay. Yeah, it's okay. We could have done. But they could have helicopter yeah. there. That would have been cooler. I mean, I got the shittiest dates ever on the Bachelor. So to me, I'm like that would have been awesome. Did you go to Costco? Because I did. For your bet. Oh, you did. Yeah. What, what was this? what was it? Why? Uh, oh, I don't know. Jimmy Kimmel tub? sent me and Chris to Costco to have a date there. And I was like, I actually enjoyed it. I was like, sick. I love Costco. <laughs> <laughs> On the goosebump meter, like I, I, I always get, I know it's a good episode if I get goosebumps. Four times I got goosebumps oh, watching uh, Aaron and um, Charity's date. Yeah. And it just Four kept times. getting more romantic and more genuine and easier. And they just really seemed to hit it off and be comfortable and of course we had a country music singer what is with is it because abc and cmt or what what, uh, is country music involved with abc or something because they always have tickets to cma fest would you like an opera singer there's i would like i would like a singer songwriter like a dermot kennedy i would like maybe a rapper here and there no maybe a ballad i would like something like adele Hmm. not that they need to go on the bachelor but 
I don't know. It's always country music. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. Fun fact. I wonder if that has to do with the watching audience. The viewer We're big audience. country fans. If you're a yeah. Bachelor fan, maybe. I, I don't wonder. know. There's got to be some sort of... I'd love to see like, the numbers and reason behind the do things. But also, did you know... Let me ask you this. Go ahead. You can go did first. Did you know that the country singers have to pay to go on? I did, yeah. yeah. All right, question for the Vinos. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? So most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to $200, which is a lot. And if you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, which was me, you need rocket money. So Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Now, this has actually saved me quite a bit of money. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch one show or the free gaming trial you never actually used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, you just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's really that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place, automatically categorize your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to 720 a year. That's huge. Stop throwing your money away and cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash OTV. That's rocketmoney.com slash OTV. Rocketmoney.com slash OTV. What were you going to say? Um, what I am still surprised about is that after all these years, <laughs> it's the same script. Okay, like, what did we do? We called the fact they're canceling the party, but there's going to be a pool party or barbecue. There's always, like, it's the same aggressive, like, stupid competition group day. Like, it's the same script. I know. For 21 years. You sound like low there. Oh, that's because I'm talking. To, me and Lo talk a lot, I guess. I'm starting to talk. Um, Yeah. 20. It's just, it's so predictable. But, uh, you know, when you've been on air for that many years i guess it starts to be predictable i'm sure after 10 years of love is blind we're going to start predicting stuff too but when she's with all but the america loves their comfort food we love consistency and yeah. people complain about it but if they changed it they would complain about it and but the show's getting killed it's like you gotta change it up competition wise like they got pushed from prime time spot the ratings got absolutely i don't i think that's just this year but i just again it's you like always pay attention to the ratings, such a number, numbers such, guy. Such a numbers but guy. I'm like, ah, shit, I, I, I hate it. doesn't to matter. Say we it. don't say it. Don't say it. It doesn't, it, that hurts people's feelings sometimes what do you because mean? they feel like it reflects them as a person if the ratings aren't good. What do you, oh, like charity? Oh, I'm not sure how oh, she feels. She, I'm just oh, saying no, in the that's past. No reflection of her. No, of, that's 20 I, years. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. It, it is very predictable. But. Okay, group date. So we, we hit the one-on-one. -on -one, it's Aaron predictable Lee. also in a way where you can tell now who's watched the show when they use the lingo about here for the right reasons. Yeah, some yeah, guys yeah. aren't. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. They do. They need to find some new drama to complain about. Yeah, new drama or new formatting. Like maybe it's maybe it's just not a rose ceremony or a, they got to throw some curveballs in there, man. Wait, I'm kind of remembering back to the state now with Aaron, the first one-on-one. -on -one. He said something about in the past, his girlfriends have been like really flirty with other men. Do you remember that? Yeah. But she's the bachelorette. So I feel like that was a yeah. foreshadowing for him getting jealous because oh. she's the bachelorette. Of course, she has to flirt with other guys in front. Group dates. He's never had a group date yet. He's only had a one on one. There's good. That's my yeah. prediction. That's how you know you're someone who's seen the show a lot because they're really good at doing the foreshadowing. Like really good Adrian, at foreshadowing. The guy was doing the backflip off the thing and he made the comment. Right in the beginning of that yeah. show, like some people are here for spring break. Well, that was the theme throughout. So that's a really good point. Yeah. I think Aaron goes far, though. I mean, they oh, had, I do too. As she was, you could just see the way she looked at him. She she was into him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was just so genuine. Um, why do I hate watching people make out so much? Is that normal? Like, does everybody hate it? I cringe watching people make out. I think it's so gross. I don't care who you are, what you're doing, yeah, the situation you're, you're in. Saying. It makes me uncomfortable. So when they did, we'll get into the longest kiss ever. Yeah. Friggin'. Yeah. World record. I was like, I can't. I fast forwarded. I just can't do it. 
Yeah. I think it's part misophonia where it's the noises, but then Probably also the I'm noises. just like icked out by it. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. I don't care who you are. You making out with anybody is gross. I could never watch myself making out with. Remember we were saying on the couch? I'm like, it's so weird. Such a weird situation being the bachelorette and bachelor because you're having a conversation. And then you're like, oh, I'll make out with this guy. And then you go and have another conversation. Oh, I'll make out with him too. And you make out with like four different dudes in one night. It feels so like weirdly acceptable while you're in it, but from the outside, I was like, "Oh, that's so gross." I wonder they did the longest kiss in Bachelor history. I wonder which lead has ever had the most makeouts in one night. Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. What kidding. was the most amount of guys you kissed in one night? I don't know how big's one group date. Yeah, uh, they vary. Okay, I remember having like 10 or 12 guys on one yeah. date. I probably kissed. No, you're going to be surprised by this answer. I probably kissed four of them. Oh, that's not, oh I, I bet you. Maybe I, five. I bet you Maybe Bob six. Guinea on his first night kissed. 20. Oh, yeah. I don't know. First night? Yeah. Mm. How many did you kiss first night? As many Caleb's as there are on this season. <laughs> Well, there's a Caleb A B C D E F G on this season. There are a lot of Caleb's. I kissed two guys on the first night. Oh, that's not bad at all. Was it two? No, it's not. I feel like that's. Yeah, I think I kissed yeah. two. Okay. JJ being one of them. JJ. Weird. Uh, anyways, why is Jesse Palmer wearing a suit on the beach? Is my real question. I'm. I, I think Jesse Palmer, is really got to like he's doing a great job. He's got to throw out the cardigans. The cardigans got to go. No more uh, cardigan sweaters. Jesse Palmer loves a cardigan. They gotta go. Well, it's Carrie Fetman dressing him. For the first time, like, bam, that was good. Was when he dropped an F bomb. Like, oh, well, I feel my like they God, probably edit breath. him because he's very casual and funny and Is Canadian. He? I've never met him. I don't oh, know. he's just incredible. And so I think they probably edit him to be very yeah. serious hosty. And they let that one slide where he threw an F bomb. That he was, was like, awesome, though. Like, oh but my it was God, so funny because he chirped. It's see, it's he was it's chirping funny. the dangly ones, too. See? He was chirping oh, yeah, the, he dangly the dangly ones. ones. He was like, yeah, this guy just, you know, gets the first impression rose and goes, it wears dangly oh, yeah, we'll earrings a and a tablecloth around his <laughs> neck. Yeah. I can't with that. I, you know what? I'm all for people having their own style and showing. You know, you have your, you have a pretty unique style. Yeah, but I wouldn't say it. Well, do I? But why did why would his style? I feel like his style before he even talks pissed you off. Like you're like I don't like this guy. Oh, I know. I was like he could be a really great guy, but I was like no. There was another guy like that too. You didn't like his style. You're like give me like. Yeah, I don't um, remember his name. James, maybe? James or Kyle or something. Look, whoever. <laughs> He's got Some white hair. guy name. <laughs> <laughs> he was like helping Charity with the swing of her hips yeah, for golf. I was like, you like would. exactly what you're not supposed to do when you putt. You're not supposed to move your hips at all. Yeah, good one. <laughs> good one, Craig. Whatever your <laughs> stupid name Chad. is. Chad. Brad. Anyways, there are a lot of Caleb's, though. No. But Caleb B.? Caleb with the B. goatee. Yeah, he's Caleb like, Beat needs to get rid of the goatee. I, in my head, went, that guy looks like a pro wrestler. Looked, I, actually, I was just thinking he could have been a WWE he wrestler. He's a pro wrestler. Stop it. Yeah, I swear to God. That's why he looked so natural <gasps> in those tiny no whiteies, tiny greenies. <laughs> Wait, I love wrestling. Is he oh, really? God. Yeah. I'm going to have to look into that. I don't what'd know if he's think, WWE. What did you think but... of the whole uh, dodgeball episode? There's five rules of dodgeball. Do you know what they are? Dip, dodge, duck. Dive and dodge. Wow, good job. Yeah, that was pretty good. I don't know if that was in the right order, dip, but that was good. Dive, dive. It's dodge, it's duck, dip, dive, dodge. and dodge. Yeah. Is it is it sanitary to drink my own urine? No. 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 What is it? But it's no. Is it normal for me to drink my own urine? No. But it's sanitary, yeah, and I, I like, like the it taste. taste. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Anyways, the dodgeball date was actually pretty fun to watch. I, thought it was, I was entertained. They were really good at dodgeball. I was entertained at that one. And it, they, yeah. one of them, whoever that one guy was, maybe Xavier, it was Xavier. Xavier. Xavier was, was just fucking bombing them in. Billy Madison. Hey, I got a question. I Remember question. Billy Madison when he goes, oh, yeah. I, or no, Miss Lippy goes, I think it's time to play dodgeball. And Adam Sandler is just like nailing kids <laughs> in the head. Miss Lippy. Yeah. Did you ever think about these names? Like, <laughs> Mrs. Lippy. Yeah. Thank you very much, Miss Lippy. Wait, I got a question for you. What? So when Adrian gets MVP and obviously like Brayden was chirping it, it's hot in I here. was thinking about this. Yeah. Do you think as the Bachelorette they went to Charity and were like Charity, which do you want to choose? Like who do you want to see? Or do yeah. you think they're like 
I know Adrian's going to stir it up tonight. And producers are like, we got to bring him. Give me. It was one or the other. Like, did that ever happen on your season? Yeah. Where they said, like, which guy do you want to come? It, actually, the same question goes for, and it's a good transition to the group date. I don't remember. When Joey wins. Like, you're, t- of course, right? She probably said, Joey's she- the guy I want to kiss for four minutes. Yeah. Yeah, right? Like, you, like Bachelorette, you get a lot of say in that stuff. No? That was good. That was good. Keep going. No. Uh, yeah. No, you do and you don't. I mean, sometimes it depends on if you're giving them good TV, then you get to slide with a couple things. And Wait, if... why were you hesitant to ask that? Were you worried about like a lawsuit or something? Oh, God, no. Oh. Oh, you just like really feel like. I really feel like you it don't depends. Get that much. It just, no, it depends. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. It depends if you piss someone off that week. You know, another thing too? What? Oh, so if you piss someone off, you actually. They might be like, no, you're going to make out the person we yeah. watch. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, another thing that's interesting. What? The same day, I'm, I'm 98% sure of this. I'm not 100%. But I'm pretty sure that the same date that Charity and Airbnb had for their dinner, that's the same venue that we used after we were on, after we had our hometowns, that's where they did the rose ceremony. Because I remember walking up those steps. I'm like, I'm going to pass out. I'm so nervous. I can't, I'm, I'm not going to get up there. I've seen like four locations in the past four years of place they use for me yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they you reuse locations all the time they just have different art departments doing sometimes they can't do much but sometimes they switch it up but the i need to go back to the thongs okay all of those guys are like six foot five yoked yeah it's insane dudes in thongs which that's how it is sorry but no guy looks attractive in a thong even if you're like that i'm like but you're in a neon pink thong and can you believe they would do that while Yosef's daughter is at home. <laughs> <laughs> I love the throwbacks. The throwbacks. I like the were throwbacks awesome. too. There's a lot of it. dodgeball dates. A lot of dodgeball dates. Yeah. Thank God I wasn't on any of those. Why? I think you'd be good at dodgeball. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I think back on. You just always. I think my point is, yeah, I could do the football, all that stuff, but you just look oh. like a jackass. No one like looks like. Oh, you, you threw the ball fast. Everyone loves you. No, he's like. I think it's hot. You do. If a guy's good at sports, yeah, like dodgeball and a thong, like you're okay. That's you're paying attention to their athleticism. Like Adrian makes us the catch, and you're like, "Oh, that's my husband." No, it's stupid. well, when he caught the two, that's a different story. Yeah, well, <laughs> he had one thinking? ball in his hand, and he caught yeah. it at the same time. I was like, "That was impressive." You thought that was hot? No, I thought but it was now impressive. You think Adrian's hot. <laughs> <laughs> like we were saying, we don't feel like connected to anyone yet, but that's how well we feel connected, I'm connected to, to Joey. Joey. Aaron. I was connected to Joy before the show, though. Douche jar. No. Dollar, right there. Joy, Put it Joey in. was a buddy of mine. Yeah, I know. The guy's amazing. I was co- and he was before the show. And I think everyone needs to know that. That, like, the day I met him, no, I know. He's good he guy. told me he was from Hawaii. And I was like, that's Caitlin. It was the island he was from is your favorite place island. to visit. And or Kauai. I called you right after I met him. Yeah, I know. This, is, this had nothing. This was a year before he was picked to go on the show. I no. Was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. This was two years, probably. A year and a half, two oh, years. Oh, I thought you met him and he said he was auditioning no, or something. No, 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 no. It was two years before. And the second, I was so, he left such an impression with me. I called you immediately after. I was like, you're not going to leave this guy I met. He's a, a pro tennis player out there. He said, he'll show us around anytime. His energy was amazing. The whole time he was smiling, the guy is an absolute gem. Yeah. He seems like a gem. He, he was, and when he, so he reached out to me and he's like, hey, this this person's saying they're from the show casting me, like, for a, they DM'd him like and he's like is this legit I was like I don't know that name so I went to Melissa the casting director I was like who is this person goes, oh we just hired that person it's legit and I said go get that guy mm. he is awesome and <laughs> he's a great kisser apparently or at least a long kisser That's, um, <laughs> the, I just kept stopping I'd like see beautiful girls in Vancouver and I'd be like you, go, you should go to The Bachelor and like if they said hi or something like if they there's so many good looking girls in Vancouver it's bizarre but they would be like oh nice to meet you or whatever and i'd be like i'm gonna take a picture of you said just casting <laughs> <laughs> did any of them get on i don't know i sent in a few yeah anyways um do i really think, okay, do you think they actually like they gave him shavers and razors and people were like for sure clean it up yeah i would well yeah i, I thought yeah like when you go on the show you could yeah well, yeah, but I, I'm like, who's, laser. who's going on to the show with like, full well, how do you do? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I was, I would save, <laughs> I would save you? the bush for when, and then I'd be like, oh, cause you can't shave it every day. Otherwise it hurts. This was before laser, but you can't shave it every day. So I'd wait till it was like 
a potentially a bathing suit date or potentially a but that's what i'm saying you know it's gonna be a group date on a beach and you don't well think he, he didn't know they were wearing thongs actually it was sun's out buns out they should have known yeah but maybe they wanted to clean up a little bit more okay i don't know dudes can be hairy also, i think it's fine it was well so can girls i it's paid attention to that wind me. that was cold out there that's tough i didn't even look at a bulge once i, mean, I wasn't there, like sizing them up cold there's not gonna be bulges Really? I thought that was only if it was in cold water. No, if it's shrinkage like, if happens it, when it's cold, cold. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's an excuse. They're like, oh man, it's so windy. No, I swear, yeah, I... <laughs> it's the wind. <laughs> it's the wind. No, if it's cold, cold, there's gonna be shrinkage. I mean, yeah. they're in LA. How cold is it? Uh, it was coming in. Uh, it was. I mean, Charity was in a hoodie. It was windy. Poor guys. <laughs> oh God. What's the worst thing? <laughs> all right, you're the Bachelorette. There's 20 dudes playing dodgeball. They all shave up are in their thongs what's the number one worst thing that you can witness as the bachelorette like what's like a me- like paint the worst case scenario i like already had that farts or someone like ew shits on oh my like, god a little squirt a hershey squirt <laughs> what would be, like what, you're the bachelorette worst thing that yeah, could possibly hershey happen squirt. would be her. <laughs> what would be the second worst well i saw it on on my season <laughs> they did a wrestling date and yeah. they had um, oh, I don't want to butcher the name of it. It's very like part of the culture. Um, hey Siri, what do you call a wrestling diaper? Mawashi. And uh, this guy Joe Bailey, his nuts were just hanging out, and he was like, "Ah!" Stop and it. he called me sweetheart. He goes, "Sorry, sweetheart, you've seen it all now." <laughs> his nuts were out. Oh, fully. I was saw both his, of them. Was his piece out or not? No, just the nuts. Just the nuts. <laughs> Where was the piece? tucked up in the mawashi and oh. it's like a, like really tight here and oh, so his ball sack was just over yeah a bit. Mm-hmm. yeah what would you think of that um balls are gross <laughs> i don't care how beautiful your piece is down it's there it's tough to like paint up. balls are yeah. not hot yeah ew all <laughs> dangly what the dangly ones <laughs> Yes. You like the dangling ones? No, sick. Why do they dangle so long sometimes? Is that after That's you another, ejaculate? No, it's, a heat, it's a heat thing. So the hot. Ew, when it's hot, they dangle more? Yeah, when they're hot. Cause, cause hot the, balls sag more. Like, sick. Yeah, you have to, like, your balls actually, as far, as far as they can get away from your body to cool off, they cool off. Oh, smart and body. Then, and that's smart body. And then when it's super cold, you shrink because your balls need to get warm. So they go as close as they try to, like, they go gotta up in the your body. They got to be in the proper climate for your semen? Your stomach. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but why do, like, is it after you ejaculate, do they hang? <laughs> It says ring for wine. I got my sperm tested the other day. I know. Yeah. Got some swimmers in you. you got some swimmers. It's <laughs> great numbers. Guess what? Yeah. My eggs are washed up, frozen <laughs> somewhere, but the real, the, I don't even know if I have any left in here. 38 now. But you got good frozen ones. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't know they're good yet. Anyways, why do they hang so low? Wait, you don't? Wait, I'd see, like, see two seconds. Oh, I really want to go back to balls. Okay, let's go back to balls. Let's go back to balls. No, I don't know. You don't know how good the eggs are that are frozen. Oh, I thought they would only oh, freeze sorry, them if they're sorry, good and healthy, they are, right? Because they're healthy, but you don't know if they're going to work. I, I read something recently. It's seventy percent chance that it's going to be successful if you have a healthy egg. Okay, well, I don't let's know go back that. to balls. I'm um, not a fertility so yeah, doctor. Balls can get like super, super like dangly if it's really warm out, and then they go like it's crazy how th- like the volatility in the size <laughs> of the nuts. Volatility like, of it, the nuts. It can go from like this big yeah. to like literally like like, <laughs> like in a matter of seconds like i uh, know but it's just it's crazy i want to see it i want to like, like next you time wanna... you're naked i'm just gonna like throw cold water on it and see how much it's gonna go up <laughs> it's crazy weird it's like a slinky like you know a slinky goes up and then ew now i'm picturing a, a slinky sack. dick no we're talking about balls okay anyways let's move on we can only talk about balls for so long mom isn't listening to this one she definitely is (laughs) hi mom (laughs) hey mom hey klooch sorry i'm such a disappointment to the family (laughs) all right i don't know about you guys but um i don't think i've ever heard anyone complain about getting jewelry as a present but jewelry can be tricky to get right i think and especially when you're investing in such an incredible gift like that you want to make sure everything is absolutely perfect and that's where Blue Nile comes in. They make it so that you can feel your best about your purchase. 
Blue Nile offers thousands of independently graded diamonds and fine jewelry at prices significantly below traditional retail. So whether you're purchasing for yourself or someone special in your life, they can offer peace of mind with every single purchase with some of the highest quality standards in the whole industry. And you can even design your own earrings or check out their necklaces for a timeless essential. They pretty much have whatever it is you're looking for. I've been trying to invest in some really simple and classic pieces that kind of work and go with everything. So I got the diamond stud earrings and the mini diamond bar bracelet. I just love both of them so much and I can't wait to browse for other people on their site too. And sometimes it can get, you know, a little confusing with all the great options out there. But if you have questions, Blue Niles experts are on hand 24-7. Experience the ease and the convenience of shopping Blue Nile today. That's BlueNile.com. BlueNile.com. I feel like I say this a million times, but life moves so fast, freakily, spookily fast. So I'm all about, you know, anything in my life that can help me navigate it. And Starbucks Ready to Drink Coffee delivers an uplifting boost that helps you tune in to the moments in life that matter, wherever you are and whatever you may have going on. It's the Starbucks coffee you know and love, conveniently packaged for life on the go. And I will say my life, as you know, is very much on the go. <laughs> so this has just made my daily coffee or two or three sometimes that much easier for my lifestyle. Like I like to bring one with me in the car in the way to the gym or appointment and grab one from the fridge between podcasts or something. Just so easy, so delicious. I also love the range of their Starbucks ready to drink coffee. So whether I'm in the mood for Starbucks Frappuccino, chilled coffee, drink or a nitro cold brew, there are really so many good choices for whatever I'm feeling at the moment because I, don't know, I like to switch it up, you know? I definitely like to have options and variety that you can have with their ready to drink coffee. So go grab yourself some Starbucks coffee ready for right now. Shop the full lineup online or in store or wherever you buy groceries. Let's go back to Dangly <laughs> Earring Brayden. Okay. He's he's just showing his age. He's 24. Oh, she doesn't tell me what oh, I want to hear. 24? My bags are packed. Yeah. Ew, yeah, bro. Here's what I think. I always think about this. How do you go? into filming a reality show and then act like that 10 days in. It's, I get when people crack after like four or five weeks. How I get when act? they crack after five days. I get it. But that's, I guess, you know, that's, you can only be a certain person for so long. It's really hard getting the first impression rose. I will say that I've never gotten one, but I know that it's hard because it's like the only thing you haven't gotten in this franchise, first impression rose. I, oh, sad. No, I want one. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's hard because then you feel like you're already chosen. And then now you have to watch this person you have the most incredible connection with, go make connections with everybody else when you already, when all these other guys have to like build and build and build, you already have this validation. And then I feel yeah, like Brayden, uh, so I'm, that's you know, true. that's me giving him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, because I remember with Blake too, he got the first impression. Oh, it's rose. hard. Or no, he got, no, he got the first one on one that went well. And Blake just like slowly was falling apart as far as like yeah, it's how, hard. how, how hard it was to be around the guys as his connection got further. And the, further. the lines are so blurry where Brayden needs to realize, like, if you're talking now 10 days in about how that's your girl and she's being classless by making out with other guys in front of you and you are on The Bachelorette, I understand that it sucks and I understand that it hurts your feelings and that's very valid because you're a real human being, but you can't make her feel bad for it. She's got such... The Bachelorette and The Bachelor have the most incredibly terrifying responsibility to not hurt people but you're but knowing you're hurting people and from anything and everything we've seen from charity she is the classiest of all time like to call I'm not classy? her classless no i didn't see your episode <laughs> just kidding. but she is just kidding. so classy i can't can we put <laughs> like i'm trying to talk to you and i look past you and all i see is andrew's feet oh, no, it's like so can bad. we put those like look at those bunions i mean those <laughs> fucking intense like what oh, happened? Brayden will be great on Paradise, feet. though. Maybe oh, maybe great... he'll get the redemption. He'll get the redemption. But story. I mean, if you're you already know worried, it's going down. It's going down. Quick. If you already, if you think that's disrespectful, where the date is set up, like she didn't plan that date. They have date planners for that. Yeah. She has to, she has to do it. Those guys didn't have to watch. They chose to because they were all like, hey, you know, and it is what it is. It sucks. Yeah. But if 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 you're already concerned about that, what's going to happen when she goes into the bounce? Yeah, fantasy that's, I was suites. thinking about that and. And I'm I'm a team I'm all team Joey, but I will say just like for those other guys, I felt bad. That sucks. I truly, like that you're sitting there for four minutes watching. That's tough. I truly don't know the ending or who she picks, but if she doesn't pick Joey, I hope he's bachelor. Joey is just whatever 
good comes his way, I'll be happy for him. Let's talk about him. He is as real as it gets. And truly. Like, it was so cute what he said. His way everyone was talking about their favorite kiss and he was like he mine. Like started with her. And it just yeah. happened to be the longest kiss ever. I was like, smooth the not chunky peanut butter, smooth peanut Spoiler butter. Spoiler alert, you and I were asked to host that date. Oh yeah, we were. And we passed. Why wouldn't they ask Gabby and Rachel first? Maybe they asked why them for another one you, and they couldn't. Why did we pass? You don't talk why about did we pass? No. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I can't say why did not. we pass? Yeah. Because you're like, I'm not going from hosting the show to hosting a Guinness Book of World Record, record or what bachelor longest kiss date. Well, the money wasn't good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. You got to say no to some things and that yeah. budget's gone down. <laughs> we also got offered to go down to Paradise. That was. I would have actually liked to host that date because, well, I can't, I probably can't we say couldn't, it. We couldn't go down to Paradise though because I think we would have gone down. We both I had, had obligations. CMA that we could. Fest. You had CMA, no, and you had a bit, you out in LA and I had my thing with Wyndham in uh, Grand Over. Uh -huh. So we had two business obligations that made a lot more sense than going down to Paradise. The other thing too is you go down, especially if you're just hosting one date, you go down. It's a whole process. You schlep, it's three, five, three, five days. If it's only going to be hosting one section of one date, you're going to film for like eight hours. I just really wanted to like hang out with Carrie and Gina. Two <laughs> seconds of airtime, like two, not even yeah. two. So it's like, it will never make like economical sense. Well, that's why I don't, I don't go on to, I go on for like, I, I genuinely like helping people if I can help 100%. in any way. Yeah. I definitely like money. And I love hanging out with my old friends, like the stylists and yeah. the makeup artists and Jesse all the Bennett. like, I love, yeah. I love them. Yeah. So that's like, I don't know, a win for me. But let's talk you about know Joey. I had so much fun. Can I just say the, like, yeah. the, one of the most fun I've ever had with the show was um, when we got to do Listen to Your Heart. Oh, yeah, that judges. was fun. Mm -hmm. That was so much fun. That was really I would have done that for free 18,000 times over. I did really enjoy that. That was Although fun. it was like two months later when Rita Rita Wilson, she was on the panel with us. It was like us. three weeks later. It was like three weeks later, she got COVID and you were sick as a dog. And we're like, did we get COVID from Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson? I'll take it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy Honks. Love him. Okay. Okay, Joey. Yeah. Just a, just seems like a stand-up guy had a very important conversation with Charity about how his dad came out came when he was in kindergarten, kindergarten. Yeah. which is so, I hate when people say it's so brave, but it really is because- I just got goosebumps. That probably shaped him as a person in and he chose for it to shape him in an incredible way where he sees love as in all shapes and sizes and forms and different ways. And it felt like, you know, he's so close with his dad still yeah, and goes the, to him for everything. And this, yeah. you know, you can I say this all the time about my divorced parents. Right, I, again? That's oh, twice. I say this all the time about having divorced parents that are both incredible people. I still was shown healthy love. Yeah. You know, like I still, I still got to see two people respect each other. Maybe there's a, a dull moment in there, a dark time, but overall, mm -hmm. and that, you know, he chose to see it as that too. And his parents chose to still have a strong relationship. And I don't know, he just seems, you know, when you can just tell somebody's a good guy. Yep. Like, even if you didn't know him, I yeah. would have already, I'm sure everybody that has watched is like, wow, that's a, that's totally. a good guy. And that's why I, I know you gave me the douche jar, which I owe two bucks to, but that's why I wanted to bring it up because there's some people that might seem like a good guy and then there's a really the good guy and he is a really good guy. Yeah. And the two things that you already mentioned, I loved about the conversation. One, the vulnerability. I, I want to give people perspective by week two of the bachelorette when they're filming, you're talking about four days probably since you walked out of that limo mm -hmm. and and it's very very tough four days in to get used to the cameras and everything and mm -hmm. then be vulnerable mm -hmm. for him to be like okay with the cameras vulnerable about, about vulnerable something about something so important to him so early and then showcase like his love admiration respect and the fact he said he's the most important person in my life yeah i don't know I, it was so so powerful. important and powerful and a message and that charity is just saw that and amazing i feel like they have such a good connection too like right now these are my thoughts adrian is too serious yeah but buzz yeah. killington yeah caleb which B. i also i, I want to kind of like give him a little slack like he's, nope. he's got a kid no slack. like he's just kidding you know what I mean? No, he's and he knows what he is. He's I, the most he's mature. He's a mature guy. He's 33. But he's also 33, you have like, to realize that you can't, 
charity probably wants to see your fun side and you can yeah, you have this opportunity to make friends and have fun and yeah. it's that place is going to be hell for you if you don't make it fun that's true yeah going in but still like you know if I, like if i went onto the show now and there's some 23 year old yeah you know, no, oh i like it. you, you it's, that's true. That is tough, especially if you. Yeah, right. You'd be home. shotgunning with him. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, Brayden, give me your ear and let's pop this beer. Yeah, that's exactly what you would do. Uh, uh, Caleb B needs to get rid of the goatee. I can't do a goatee on a guy. No. I love facial hair, but a goatee just reminds me of my stepdad. Anyways, um, we love Joey. <laughs> Robbie. Actually, my dad. My dad has a goatee. Go I, so it's for dads. It's for dads. It's a dad thing. Um, we love Aaron and Joey. Joey's just yeah. Top dog. Top, top hot diggity Anyone dog. else sticking out to you? In a good way or bad or both? Just like in a good way. Like you see any like, how about studs? You see any studs? You see any guys that you're just like. Tanner seems cute. Tanner's a stud. I didn't think Aaron was a stud until after the date. The first date. The first yeah, yeah, one yeah. on one. Yep. Then I was like, wow, he's a stud. Yep. Uh, I don't really know. It's hard. It's only episode two. I love Charity's reactions. Like when she had that one, she was talking about the date with Aaron and she said, phenomenal. Like when she's like, it was phenomenal. Like that, when she did that, it was so pure. Yeah. Through the TV screen, you could feel a real emotion, not some fake bullshit. Mm-hmm. <sighs> we love some real, we love, uh, we love a real, real queen. Honest. And she is a real queen. What yes. else? Do you got anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Um, I didn't watch the first episode, which I should probably do. And then, because now I want to see these guys, now that I know a few of them, like yeah. from this episode, I want, kind of want to go back and see their limo entrances and stuff and see why she gave yeah. Brayden the first impression, Rose, because maybe that'll change my tune a little bit. Okay. Well, let me ask, I mean, I think until, like for most bachelorettes until recently, the person who got the first impression, Rose, like went all the Cause way. Because women's intuition is no joke. Do you think by the end of the I say that and then I'm like. We're at the end of the oh. <laughs> like, That's actually pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um at the end of week two, did you have a pretty good idea of who was going to be in your top four? Yeah, but and Ben so, Higgins you, was a surprise for me. Oh, really? And do you think at the end of week two, I didn't Actually, think Actually, Jared and a, Ben were a surprise for me. I knew. Okay. Sh- well, no, I, I, Nick wasn't even there yet. Okay. I, so no. <laughs> so no. Then no. So I you knew, knew one person of the four that would be in your top four. Yeah. I, did, I thought that I had a better chance of lightning striking me than me being in the top four after week two. And I think if Becca was here, she would say there was no chance he was in my top four. Yeah. I love, yeah. but I, we love a, a slow burn and a, a underdog. Yeah. I mean, and I was the opposite going into Chris season. I was like, I am the best one here. <laughs> I was like, can we talk about this? What? What? I'm going way off the cuff here, but we're in bachelor nation. Off the vine, you mean? Going off the vine. Um, what do you make of all this transition of Bachelor Happy Hour podcast? Well, I don't know what's going on. Well, the, the, there was there was clickbait. Is that right? gone? So clickbait's gone now. They got mm-hmm. rid of it. Um, then there was uh, Bachelor Happy Hour, which was originally, I think, run by Rachel Lindsay and Becca Kufrin. They then rotated different hosts. Then it was Michelle and Becca Kufrin. There was some kind of controversy with. Well, I know the controversy. Happened. Oh, you do? Well, yeah. Well, why did? Well, no, there I was don't. Some, there it's was not my story like to tell. It got fired. Okay. I I will say one thing, and I hope this is not me telling their story, but me feeling like it something was justified. Okay. But when we went for, I might have already talked about this. When we went for Gabby and Rachel's finale. Okay. We we're gonna address Eric doing blackface, and. Uh, Michelle was very passionate on having a voice for that. And Becca and I were there to support her and to be a part of it. And they didn't touch on it. And Michelle just walked off the stage. And at the end, we walked off and we're like, what happened? And they're like, oh, it was a, what a great episode, though. Hey, eh? we ran out of time. Was the and plan, that was, was the plan, like, you know, when you usually get an idea, a show, what do they call it, a run of show? Was that in the run yeah. of show? And then they just got rid of it. Mm hmm. And we were all quite upset with everybody from it. And we were just straight up like, this is bullshit. Yeah. And Michelle was like, I am the host of your podcast. And you have again made me feel not heard, not seen. And I don't know if that has anything to do with it. And that's all I'll say because I don't know why or what happened from there. Yeah. And I don't know. And it's not my story to tell, so I don't. Sure. I actually don't know. So that okay. was me, my uh, something I saw, but I don't know if that was the reason Understood. for leaving. But then we saw Thomas um, talking about how he didn't agree with some things that were going on behind the scenes. It, it so I'm not like sure. The way 
Um, it sounds like the way it went down didn't seem like it was professionally handled in Thomas's right. perception. Right. Um, but I love Joe and Serena. But <laughs> love yeah. me some Joe and Serena. Know, yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, Joe and Serena are great. Um, but if they're stepping into a role, like for me, I would choose to say no to that if it had anything to do with what I th- what I saw. Yeah, but I bet I wouldn't Joe and Serena definitely don't know that. Of course. No, I don't I'd, know any of this either. Yeah. And I don't know if that's what it is. I don't yeah. know. Uh, and if that was the case, of course, you know, you know, good yeah. for them, but for stepping away and doing their own thing. But the only thing I would ask is the timetable. When was that finale? Yeah, it was a long time ago. Over a year ago, right? Yeah. So, so I don't you know. would think if that was the reason, they pro- she would have probably stepped away right away. Yeah. Not stayed for another year. Right. I don't know. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. And then you think who else would they have picked? Well, Joe and Serena were already in their circle. Oh, and- Serena's probably pissed because she's like, now I worked on getting my own visa. I'm Canadian. I could have got it through your show now. Oh, yeah. Oh, Joe. Oh, yeah. They probably spent a, a ton of money on that. Yep. But I just but maybe think, now like, they who can else renew. Could have, like, oh, no, who else could have done, who else could have hosted that, you think, other than Joe and Serena? Um, it's pretty Gabby limited. and Rachel? Oh, shit. No, is Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think having a... I do... No. I don't right. know. Okay. Well, that's it. That's all I got. All right. Anything else going on in Bachelor Nation world? Mm, I don't think so. Nothing? I mean, you know. Nothing? Do I know? Yeah, like you get your little Bachelorette chat. Like anybody, any oh. big news going on? No, we always just say Come happy on, birthday to tea. each other. We, uh, we don't talk about this stuff often. We, there's no tea. We all just say happy birthday to each other, and we just invited Charity into the group chat and talked about how incredible she She's is. She's awesome. And that was yeah. it. Cool. That's it, and then and we're out of time. So. We're out of time. Yeah. Well. I'm sweating. Why are you sweating? In my sweatsuit. Because it's hot cool in it. here. I think it's cool. Cheers. Oh. Yeah. Am I okay? Um, we got to... <laughs> what? Am I okay? Yeah, you're good. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting in my head. Gotta go. Uh, thanks, everybody, for either listening or watching. And what do you say? Um, do you always say at the end, rate and yeah, review? Yeah, we'll, we'll, well, first of all, it really helps the show to follow. So follow Caitlin's show. It's free to do so. Go to YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. We're trying to get to 100,000 followers. If Caitlin gets to 100,000 subscribers, I get to tattoo something on her. So please do that. <laughs> Every video that you see, like and comment. And I think the most important. Oh, I this, feel so despy when I ask for that, though. No, but it's it's part of growing your show. And people out there love your show, so they want it to grow. Please uh, help. Five me. stars on Apple really helps. <gasps> Give yeah. me five stars on Apple. Five stars on Apple. And then with that, Please. with that, tell Caitlin who you want her to have on as a next guest. Alicia, her producer, will check it out. And then let's throw in one more thing. Of anybody that gives a review in the next week, Caitlin is going to send you one signed bottle of Spade and Sparrow. So she's going to yeah, pick she's going to pick one person. You got to write the review, though, and you're going to get a signed bottle from Caitlin Bristow. Desperado. It's part of the, it's part of working. Sitting man. in a old it's Monte work. Carlo. You're working. Oh, uh, okay. Well, thank you for that. Go back. Feels us. better when somebody else says it, not me. <laughs> uh, wait, there was one more thing. Um, subscribe, comment, bleep, bleep, bleep. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Costco, wine. I lost my train of thought. What was it about? I don't know. Okay. People are so, we probably lost them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you stayed this long, thanks. <laughs> Uh, okay. In case we don't see you. Good night. Good afternoon. Good morning. And, and good night. night. I'm Caitlin Bristow. Your session is now ending. And if I'm being honest, I wouldn't mind a rating and review.